Inventory is one of those things that often seems harder than it should be. Like, why are the numbers off? But there aren't actually that many reasons for an inventory to be wrong. Actually, there can really only be two. Either something came into the inventory without being recorded accurately, or something left without being recorded accurately. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you a very simple and effective system for managing inventory in Airtable. It does the math for you, but more importantly, it has a very clear workflow for anyone who is entering or shipping inventory from your system. We even build in some buttons and forms so that members of your team who don't log into Airtable can still record when things come and go. And at the end, I'll show you how to link it with a customer database. You can download a template of this system in the video description below. All right, so I've got a blank base here. We are going to make an inventory for a clothing store. So I'm gonna call the base clothing inventory. And then this first table is going to show all of our products. So we'll call this products, delete the example fields. And now I'm going to make my, my basic fields here, which are going to be a color. That's a single select product type. That's also a single select and a picture. And that's an attachment field. And now I'm going to paste some example data in here. Expand the table. All right, so you can see I've got my different colors, products, and then some product pictures. Let me just make these colors right here. This is going to bother me. All right, so last thing I'm going to do real quick is to, uh, in the name field, is just to make a combination of these two. So we'll open this up and we'll call this product ID. And then this is going to be a formula. And in the formula, we'll just say color, choose the color field, use an ampersand, and then a space in quotations, another ampersand, and then the product type. And that's just an easy way for us to see both of these together. All right, so now that we have our products table, we're gonna make two more tables, one for receiving items and one for selling items. So I'll create a new table, call this received, get rid of the example fields. And just like the first table, I'm gonna leave the name blank for now and we'll make it with a formula later. So the first field that we're gonna create is going to be the product ID. This is what is gonna to link to the products table. So we'll call this product ID and then click link to another record and click the products table. And I'll un untoggle this because each record here is gonna represent one time that we received a product and so it's only going to be one product ever that we receive in one line. So now if I were to go in here and click plus I can see all my products that I can choose from when I receive items. Next is going to be a quantity. It'll be a number field, integer, and then a cost. Call that price per unit, make it a currency field. And then we can make a total order price. That's a formula and it's gonna be the quantity times the price per unit. Then we gotta go in here and make this a currency field. And the last field I'm gonna do is a date received. Now that we've got all our fields here, we can create our, our main our primary field here by stringing a few of these together. So I wanted to basically say, uh, you know, this, this should be unique for each row. So basically when I receive something, it, because it has a quantity and a product and a date, I want to say I received 100 yellow t-shirts on August 10th. So going into here, 
we will make this a formula. And then we can say quantity. And a space. Then the product. And then we're going to put the date, but we need to format the date. So we'll use a date time format function, put the date received, and then we'll format that as month, day, year. And we got an error here because these are blank. Let's just go through one to see how it works. So we'll pick a product. Let's say we're going to receive yellow t-shirts, a hundred of them. They cost $7 per unit. And so the total order price was $700. Great. And the date was August 17th. So, yep, this thing worked. That's great. We've got our, our name here. Let's delete these blank ones. And I'm going to just paste in some more example data. All right, this is looking pretty good. The last thing I want to do is to create a form so that people who are not logged into Airtable can still enter things into the receiving. So we will create a new form, call this receiving. And so automatically it gives us our fields here. So yes, we want the product ID, the quantity, and the price and the date. So luckily for us, our sold table is going to be almost identical to the received table. So we can just duplicate it. So go here, hit duplicate table, and I'm not going to duplicate the records. I'll paste in some new records here so that we can see the, the difference in between, you know, so we can compare the difference between receiving and sold. So we'll call this sold. And let's change this to say date sold. And we'll change our form to be called sold with the same information. And I'll paste the example data in for this one too. All right, so we have built all of our three tables and we've got data in each of them. Now comes the fun part where we can add up what's been received and what's been sold and actually create an inventory of what's in stock. So we'll go back to the products table and you can see now that we've got the received and what is called, it's calling the received copy. So we'll change that to sold. And just to make this a little more clear, I'm going to say sold records and received records. So because we've now linked the received records and the sold records, we can use a rollup field type to add up the information from those tables. So first I'm going to add up the received quantity. So we'll make a new field called received quantity. We'll make this a rollup field. And so in a rollup, we need to specify the table that we're going to roll up. So that's the received records. And then the field is going to be the quantity. And so, and then the aggregation formula here. So here I choose how I'm going to summarize the data that we're rolling up. So in this case, we want to add it all up. So I'm going to sum the values. Now we can see a nice clean sum of how many we have received of each product. Since we don't really need to look at these received and sold records, I'm actually going to hide those. And then let's create our second rollup. So this is going to be the sold quantity. Rollup, this is for the sold records, quantity, and we'll sum it. And you probably guessed the next step, which is to subtract sold from the received. So we'll call this in stock. And we'll write a formula that simply takes received quantity and subtracts the sold quantity. Look at that. 
So let's make sure our system is working correctly. I'm actually gonna group these by the product type, just make this a little more organized. And so if I'm looking at the green t-shirts here on top, I can see that I received 753, I sold 367, and so I have 386 left. Let's say I'm gonna sell another 300. So um, we'll, we're gonna add that to the sold record and then hopefully this is gonna adjust properly. So I'll go down to here. What did I say? Green t-shirts. So we'll pick our green t-shirts. 300 for 20 bucks each. And we sold them on August 17th. So now if we go back into our products table, we can see, yes, there's only 86 left. That is great. So that's our basic system. And what makes this system both simple and great is that anytime something comes in, we log it here. Anything, anytime something gets sold, we log it here. And so if there is any discrepancy or we have a question, we can always go back to our record and see what came in and what left and how that resulted in the official number. So the last thing I want to do is to make this a little bit prettier and easier to interact with and then to incorporate our forms that we created before so that people who don't log into this system so that they don't have uh, the creator access can still say they're working in the warehouse, enter stuff into the receiving, or if they're working in our shipping department, uh, in our clothing inventory example, then they can enter things as sold. So the first thing I want to do is to create a gallery view. And this is just our really nice visual example of each product here. And I can customize the cards. So I'm going to prioritize in stock to be shown here. And we already know kind of what the, the product type is and the picture is in the thumbnail here. So this just says in stock. And what we're going to do to these cards is we're going to add a couple buttons that then people can click and add or receive inventory. So going back to our grid view, I want to add a button field. And this field is going to be called receive product. And so the button field, the label is also going to be receive product. That's what will show up on our button. And let's make this a green, solid green button. And so the action is going to be an, to open a URL and we have to go, find, go get our form URL. So I'm going to just put a placeholder quotation marks in here and create the field. Now we've got our receive product uh, button. So now I'm going to go into receiving and I'll get the form URL for receiving. paste that in here. And then to make it even easier, we can pre-fill the exact record so that the person who's entering this information don't, doesn't even have to pick that it's green t-shirts. They'll just click the link next to green t-shirts and boom, it'll pop up. So to do that, we'll add an ampersand and then we'll add another quotation. And then we're going to add a question mark because the pre-fills always start with a question mark. And then we'll say pre-fill product ID. And if you've been through one of these tutorials with me before, you'll know that we need to add a percent 20 here instead of a space because URLs don't take spaces. So this is the URL representation of a space is percent 20. So product ID equals, and then outside of the quotations, we'll add an and, and then we're going to put the record ID. So what that's doing is saying the product ID in the received table is going to match the record ID of this record. So if it's green t-shirts, it's going to pass it green t-shirts. And we're just going to do that for now, but you could also do that with a date and prefill the date as well. So now if I click receive product for my green t-shirts, it's going to bring me to a new page with green t-shirts already filled out. And then, so if I wanted to do this, then I could fill out, yes, I'm going to receive a hundred green t-shirts at $6 per unit on August 17th, submit. Then if I go back to my inventory here 
and look in the received table, I can see that my 100 green t-shirts just came in. So going back to the products table, we'll just do the same exact thing for sold. And there's our sold product form, green t-shirts, same thing. Now that we've created these buttons, we can go into our gallery here and customize the card so that our buttons show up here. And now we've got a nice little interface that where we can see what's in stock and we can receive and sell product just by clicking one of these buttons like that. To share this with our team members, we can just click the share view here, create a shareable gallery view link. And so then if we go to this link here, this is shareable with anyone, regardless of whether they're logged into Airtable. And now they've got this nice gallery view here where they can receive and sell product. Now, often people like to connect their sold items with customers. And so the last thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna sync a customer database so that we can assign customers to each of the sold products. So I already created a CRM, a customer relationship manager, and that is in a separate Airtable base here. These are my different customers. And so I also created a shared view link and then I toggled on this button here that says allow data in this view to be synced to other bases. So now what I can do is sync it to my inventory base. So I'm gonna go back into the inventory base create a new table here and I'll click sync data from an Airtable base. So now I want to select my base here. It's going to be the Mean Girls, table one, grid view. I'll leave the settings as is. And now I've got my customers here. So if I go back to the sold record, I can now add a field called customer and we'll link it to the grid view. We're gonna have to change the name of that. Um, just allow one record to be linked here. And so let's go back here, call this customer. And so now you see we've got our nice uh, field uh, that's linked to the sold table. So let's add some customers in here. And so we've got a customer that is related to each of these sales. Add another Glen Coco. And so now if I go back here, I can see all of these different records of sales and I can even add up the actual sales dollars, which is probably what one of the first things you're going to want to do. So we'll make a total sales roll up. And then we can say in the sold table, the total order price, and we'll sum the values. And there's our inventory base. If you like this video, make sure to check out these similar videos here. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel, which helps other people like you find these videos. I'll see you next time.